Good morning. Well, it is uh, September 29th, 2021. And here is the 300EW124 with the M103 motor. And sadly, I found where the oil leak is coming from. I've been hunting down oil leaks. It is coming from the head gasket. Now I had replaced the head gasket last, uh, I think it was uh, either July or September 2020. I got a dealer gasket, I got new head bolts, went through the whole thing, um, tightened it down. Um, only problem I had is um, when I was tightening the head bolts, I couldn't achieve uh, the 90 degree final torque on the bolts. And um, <clears throat> I could not figure that out. Uh, people on the forum had a hard time figuring it out. I cleaned out all the threads and everything. I sanded the block, tested it with a, with a uh, square, you know, uh, the ruler, to see if the block was okay. The block was okay. Took the head down, and I've, this is the second time doing the head gasket. The first one lasted 16,000 miles. This one, I mean, it's like maybe... 2,500 miles. It's a dealer gasket. It's the reinforced one. So, just looking at, you know, different posts on different forums on these M M103 motors, they just suffer. They have a design flaw at the number six cylinder, which is the very back, sitting in the car, it'd be on the right passenger side. And there's the, I don't know, two channels there where the, I think the oil and water go through in the gasket and it's just too close together or it gets too hot or something and they all end up leaking there. And there's people, you know, over and over again trying to fix that leak and, you know, um, so it's kind of, I guess the six cylinders suffer from this kind of thing. The M104s also have an issue with it. But the M103 seems to be like the most likely, you know, the most complaints on it. And if you want to verify that you've got a leak, you crawl under and you look straight up at the corner there with a flashlight. Um, let's see. So it's just running down and then it hits a, uh, it hits a, I think it's a, it's a, transmission line it gets on that and it works its way and goes around and gets on the bell housing and starts dripping off the bottom of the bell housing where the transmission and engine meet and it also drips onto a, uh, a steering stabilizer it drips on that and gets that all oily so you think that that thing's leaking but it's it's not so what's the plan you know, good question. You know, I've read different uh, different posts on people fixing their problem, trying to fix their problem. Um, some people say just uh, retorque the heads, retorque the head. Um, like I said, there's new new head bolts on there. They either retorque the head, um, put new head bolts in. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think these are overstretched. Uh, I'd have to measure one and see if they are. I don't think they are. I think I got it to 55 Newton meters and then a little bit farther than that torquing it, but I couldn't get the, like the final 90 that they want. Um, now some people have said, well, I cured the problem by Usually when you when you do the directions, you start at the center with a torque wrench, tightening it in a in a, in a kind of like a circle like this. You go, um, you start at the center and basically work your way out to either side. You follow the instructions. Now some people said they didn't do that. They started right here, where the problem area is, and they. Tightened this whole area and went up this way here. 
that way it like gave the big clamping force starting right there where the where the leak is and that solved their problems i don't know i'm kind of afraid to do that so right now i was just thinking maybe i'll just pull the uh, the valve cover off and just see if the bolts are tight you know uh, they, Okay, after doing a little more research, this is my plan of action. Um, since I didn't get the complete clamping force that I really wanted, which is uh, you tighten the bolts in the pattern to 55 Newton meters. Um, this is a M103 engine, according to the manual. And then you do... Uh, a you, you uh, use a, a you know breaker bar and get the uh, 90 degree angle all the way around and then you do that again so there's three steps there's the 55 newton meters with a torque wrench setting and then the 90 and then another 90. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, since these head bolts don't, these were the old ones, and I had the same problem. Even though I did clean the threads out, I think there's still junk in there, or just, who knows, you know. I don't think the head bolts are bottoming out, but what I'm going to do is I'll take the valve cover off. I'll take one bolt out at a time and clean that hole with the head on it and so i have these old uh victor heinz victor rhines or whatever it is uh head bolts and um i measured these and they uh there's these are still good these are still at a uh, like about 100 uh, millimeters and the manual says if it's over uh 105 to 108 millimeters it's stretched and what happens is uh this is what i've read on the internet right so you never know about the internet but you know check about four or five sources and then and you get three that say the same thing then you figure out okay that's the way to do it <laughs> but anyway so uh the, when these stretch these are stretched to yield uh torque to yield bolts and uh, the part that stretches is this right here from here to here is what stretches. It's not, it's not this, okay? So, uh, yeah, when you measure it, you know, you just use your uh, micrometer, whatever you have, ru fine ruler with uh, millimeters on it. And I measured it, I don't know, five or six times. And some of them are a little bit longer than the others, but not by much. But most of these are uh, right at about 100, just a hair over 100 millimeter. And when you buy these, uh, I bought mine at Auto House AZ. They were 12 by 100 millimeter. Some of them they sell you are 12 by 102 millimeter. So you know, 100 millimeter. So I'm building a thread chaser for it. And what I've done is I've got a uh, kind of a, this is a Dremel easy lock and this cuts metal. I tried using the dr this, this Dremel, but I'm gonna do, uh, use the hand drill and uh, it works pretty good. You just cut a groove. I'm gonna do it with two hands, but you cut a groove and then you have a, you've got a, uh, oh, I covered it up. Uh, I'll show you, let me, I gotta use two hands. Okay, so I've got the grooves on both sides. Not real pretty, but what happens is the, uh, when you run this through, you just grind it down till you don't see the threads on that line there. You don't really, you know, they're all kind of like gone. And this thing will screw in there and, you know, it'll clean it, all the threads on the holes and all the dirt will be picked up in these grooves right here. 
and you just keep doing that in it until it comes out clean um, you know they're probably not real dirty but like uh, if you look at the old bolts you now some of them are they're weird man Out straight. Yeah, so you just uh, clean those things out, then take a vacuum and suck it out. I'm just going to take the shop vac and uh, hook a little uh, attachment to the to the main hose, so I can stick it down the hole and make sure everything's out of there. Because if there's crap inside those threads in the block. It's going to prevent you from getting the right torque on head bolts. So anyways, that's what I learned on the internet yesterday after researching and researching. Now, some of these bolts, they, uh, the original, uh, God, what was it, nine, nine, ten years ago when I did the first head gasket on that car, uh, the bolts had threads. Oh, no, the bolts had uh, washers. Okay, and so... Um, and a certain time, I it, it'll it's all on the internet. In the uh, I think the stickies in Ben's world, there's there's all this information and stuff you got to sift through. But uh, the Mercedes changed uh, to a head bolt with an incorporated washer, right? So uh, you don't have to use another washer there. And don't because I read one thread where a guy said well I'm just gonna add another washer to this or I don't forget what he was trying to fix but he ended up stripping the bolts or uh, the bolt holes in the block <laughs> oh my god okay anyways let's keep going yeah so I took it and I put it on a, uh, a wire wheel to get it uh, get all the threads really clean yeah, kind of got a drill press up there with a with a wire wheel on it, and it cleans all this cleans all this crap out of the threads. So you have nice clean threads to start with, because you can see how dirty this stuff is. It's weird how you clean the, the threads out in the block, and the next time you do it, there's st there's stuff in there all over again. Where's that come from? I mean, you're supposed to uh, put a little bit of oil on the bottom of the head bolt and just a little bit on the thread. Um, there must be that that just gets, gets inside there. But uh, So, yeah, the plan is, is just take one bolt out at a time since the head gasket in this thing is a year old. There's maybe 3,000 miles. So I did the... It's the oil change uh, recently. I did it uh, last month, but I do it every 3,000 miles, and the last time I changed oil was when I did the, the head gasket last summer. So, um, anyways, um, yeah, I'll just uh, pull one out at a time uh, and clean the thread out. All right. And then put the bolt, clean the bolt that I take out of there, each one, and then torque it down to 55 Newton meters, like the manual says. And then I'll go to the next bolt. I just don't want to do all of them at the same time and lose any weird clamping force that might cause a water passage gasket failure or something. It's kind of scary. But I'm going to try that and see if I can achieve that that 90 degree final turn to clamp the sucker down. Um, if I do achieve it and it's still leaking, then I'm gonna loosen the head bolts up again and I'm gonna start clamping it from the very back, starting where number six cylinder is, clamp that bolt there, then that one, and then just work my way up the front. You know, that's the wrong way of doing it and everybody you know, on the forum, no, you've got to do it exactly how the manual says. Uh, per the Mercedes instructions that was written back in the 
19, late 1980s and early 90s. Yeah, but there was a design flaw for this to happen. So just so many freaking people. A lot of, some people say, no, there's no design flaw. Most people say, yeah, there's a design flaw. Why are we always doing these head gaskets? You know, why is it always at number six? So, you know, yeah, the instructions are great, but, you know, and I followed it, you know, many times. The first has gasket lasted 16,000 miles and it started puking on that side, just running down the driveway and it was driving me crazy. Okay, um, next. Hey there, so today I'm working on uh, my, my son's car. 1992 Mercedes-Benz 300E with an M103 straight six. And I'm retorquing the head bolts because uh, I have a little oil leak at the back of the head. Put the new gas, put a new head gasket in last summer. And these are notorious for leaking. So I did some research. Found one guy, uh, I think it's on Mercedes World or something. I forget the website. But I printed it out, I'll list it in the description. Um, yeah, it just leaks at number of these engines, and also I think the M104 engines do the same thing. But they leak right, uh, right here, number six cylinder. And, um, it's because of uh, dissimilar metals, aluminum head, iron block, and they they heat and cool at different you know tem temperatures and causes things to move around. Plus, they put a uh, oil passage and coolant passage in the head gasket really close to the outside of the block, and so there's just a lot going on there to make it leak. So what I did this time is um, I just started with the, uh, let's see. So this is number one cylinder here. I got it upside down like that because I took it off the internet and I was going, wait a minute, that's not number one. So um, I just started at uh, the way that you were supposed to unloosen it, you know, to take the head off and stuff. You do it in reverse up the tightening, so it'd be, be 14, 13, 12, 11, so on. So I did one bolt at a time, took it out, this big old long uh, jack handle for a breaker bar. I think it's a 12 point, uh, gotta research it, but it's a, uh, I forget what it is, a 12 point bit or something. I got it at Napa Auto hardened steel it's these uh that kind of uh i forgot what it's called um so i just took one bolt out at a time started there at the number 14 um took it measured it if i can uh i took it i measured it for uh if it's like 105 to 108 you can't you can't reuse it so i have it set right here at uh that's 100 millimeters these are 100 millimeter when you get them either 100 or 102 um and they all worth within spec you can reuse it because they're stretch bolts or the torque to yield bolts as you tighten them this part here stretches, gives you the clamping force. Um, and then when I took each one of them out, I, I made a thread chaser out of an old head bolt. Two grooves on either side, and you run it through and all this crap comes in there. There wasn't much crap other than just kind of just oily residue from when I installed it last summer. Now last summer, I torqued them down just got it torqued down to 55 newton meters or 40, 40 pounds. This is great. Always windy. Um, torqued it down 55 newton meters and then did a uh, 190 degree turn 
okay i did that to each bolt i took them out one at a time i didn't want to take them all out at the time because i didn't want to disturb the gasket too much or anything like that it's a dealer gasket it was a 137 dollar gasket reinforced supposedly but still leaks so uh what i did uh before i uh took them out is i i marked uh each one of these you can see let's see see the dot it's just white paint with a toothpick i just went around uh see if i can find a good example here like right now yeah, it's kind of hard to see but like There's a white dot right there. This dot used to be up here. Before I even started anything from torquing it last time, that's where it was at. So uh, this time, this is the first 90 degree pass and you can see how much more torque I got out of it on each one, kind of blew my mind. Um, so it's tightening it up. Now you're supposed to do one more 90 degree pass where this line, this dot should be down to about right here. I don't know if I'll get there. It's pretty hard to, pretty hard to turn these bolts. It's easier when you have a leverage, but I mean, I don't, I do not want to snap it. So I'm going to do all that and um, get underneath the car and clean that area right under there. Um, clean it up real good with some rags and brake cleaner and stuff and be able to see if it's stopped the leak but this guy um, he did a bunch of different things but uh, he ended up turning all the bolts an additional 180 degrees from where they were when he started so that's kind of where I'm at on this, but time will tell. I'm still, uh, I'm doing a uh, whole cooling system upgrade on it too. Uh, I got a new radiator and I'm waiting for a, uh, um, a fan bracket, the uh, clutch fan bearing bracket should be coming tomorrow and I can put all this back together and get the car going. But this will be interesting. I mean, it was starting to it was starting to drip on the driveway, you know, not horribly, but just enough to just get you mad. Anyways, um, I'm gonna let this sit, sit for 15 minutes and then go and retorque it. Okay, so it's a couple weeks later. Um, got the engine back together. Uh, been driven it for a couple weeks, and there's no oil leaks which is pretty good. Um, so far so good, fingers crossed. It's raining outside now. Um, so yeah, I put a new valve cover gasket on it. I repainted the, uh, the valve cover. And I put a new seal at the front here. The, uh, while well, you have all this off, it's leaking from over here. There's uh, just a little rubber seal, and then you seal the whole case with the Hylomar sealant. It's the only thing that really works. It lasts it doesn't last forever, but it you know stops it. Uh, but other than that, I'll report back if I see um, if I see it start leaking. But I did get two uh, 90 degree passes, and I think what. Uh, what really helped those bolts, you know, was uh, putting that black grease. Because before I put oil in it, was I guess it was just not enough lubrication to turn, or it wasn't for underneath the bolt head where it's clamping down. Put some of that black grease on there. I don't know if that's okay, but I was able to achieve those. And I put my bot, my whole body weight on that five foot long red bar, you know, to get it to turn. So let's. Let's see, anyways, good luck.